Alan Canock from Lake Ponderay Waterkeeper. Looking out at a lake, it's hard to believe how many organisms call these waters home. Usually, when you think about what lives in or around a lake, you may think about organisms such as fish, frogs, or ducks. However, the waters below are teeming with life and support an incredible diversity of living things of all shapes and sizes. In our next chapter, we're going to learn about some of the organisms that live in lakes, such as Lake Ponderé, and depend on clean water for food, habitat, and drinking water. Today, we're going to build our very own ecosystem using our lake model. This is our favorite educational tool here at LPOW, a handmade cross-sectional model of a lake. To start, we'll first begin by exploring the role of the smallest organisms and work our way up to the role us humans play in a lake ecosystem. Keep in mind that not all lake ecosystems are the same, and this ecosystem will be modeled after Lake Ponderé. First, let's begin with the smallest and some of the most important organisms in lake ecosystems, bacteria and phytoplankton. These two tiny organisms are the first living things to inhabit a lake ecosystem. They have a huge impact on the health of the lake, but are only visible beneath a microscope. A cup of lake water holds hundreds, if not thousands, of bacteria and phytoplankton. We just can't see them with our naked eye. Bacteria are small, single-cell organisms that can be found in all natural environments. Most of us have heard of the bad bacteria that makes you sick, but all kinds of bacteria exist and live all over the world. Good and bad bacteria are necessary to maintain balance within all natural ecosystems. I'm going to represent bacteria with a glass of water because we can't see them without a microscope, but we know that they're in the water. Phytoplankton are microscopic plant-like organisms, often no larger than a single cell, and usually float around near the surface of the water. I'm going to use fish food flakes to represent phytoplankton so we can see them floating around at the surface of the water, like algae. Together, Bacteria and phytoplankton play a major role in lake ecosystems. They rely on non-living or abiotic resources in the water and soil, including sunlight and nutrients such as phosphorus and nitrogen. They form the base of the food web and are incredibly important for the health of the whole ecosystem. For example, phytoplankton are one of the primary sources of dissolved oxygen in the water. After taking up the necessary nutrients and absorbing sunlight, they go through photosynthesis and release the oxygen directly into the water. So although tiny and unseen, bacteria and phytoplankton are incredibly important to the health of our lake ecosystems. Without them, it would be impossible for any other organism to live in the lake. So next time you go out fishing or stop to listen to the frogs croaking at night, thank the tiny microorganisms living beneath the surface for all they do to keep our ecosystems healthy and functioning. Our next organism is also microscopic. But these little guys are multicellular and therefore larger than both bacteria and phytoplankton. Zooplankton are teeny tiny animals or the larval stages of larger animals, such as fish, that float around in the water with the bacteria and phytoplankton. These microscopic animals can sometimes be seen with the naked eye, but it's more fun to look at them under a microscope to see all these microorganisms swimming around in the water. For our lake model ecosystem, I'm going to use worm-like fish food to represent zooplankton, or microscopic little animals. Zooplankton play a key role in the food web because they eat up other tiny organisms, such as phytoplankton, and are in turn eaten by the larger animals, such as fish. This food chain helps transfer energy from microscopic organisms to larger organisms that we can easily see swimming around in lakes. Zooplankton also make up an incredibly diverse community and can directly relate to the health of the water. Due to their small size and short lifespan, they're incredibly sensitive to changes in the environment. By studying their population, we're able to learn a lot about how pollution and climate change is affecting life below the surface. Another cool fact is that zooplankton can also be used to mitigate water quality issues. For example, scientists have used certain types of zooplankton called grazers to effectively control algae blooms. So although small, these tiny zooplankton play a major role in lake ecosystems because they help transfer energy through the food web, are great indicators of ecosystem health, and can tell you a lot about what's going on under the surface. Next up, these organisms aren't everyone's favorite. 
But if you take the time to learn about how amazing they are and how important they are to all ecosystems, you may eventually learn to like them. I know that over time, my appreciation for bugs and other creepy crawlies has definitely grown. A macroinvertebrate is anything without a spine that you can see without a microscope. Some important examples that live in lake ecosystems include snails, insect larvae, worms, crayfish, flies, and beetles. Many of these organisms can be used as water quality indicators in lakes and streams. Like zooplankton, these little guys are super sensitive to changes in their environment, such as nutrient levels, temperature, and clarity of the water. Macroinvertebrates usually rely on zooplankton or plants for food and help transfer energy to larger consumers, such as birds, fish, amphibians, and reptiles. I'm gonna use freeze-dried mealworms, crickets, and trip to represent our macroinvertebrates. It's important to be able to identify different species of some macroinvertebrates since there are a lot of invasive species that are threatening our ecosystems. These little guys can easily travel between our water bodies on our boats and water gear. So it's important to be aware if there are any invasive species present when visiting somewhere new so that you don't accidentally take them home with you. Also, if you're able to identify different species, you can help scientists and researchers know if there's a new species present that they weren't aware of, or help them determine if there's been a change since the last time they did a study. When I'm out on the water, I like to look for caddisflies, mayflies, and stoneflies because they're indicators of good water quality. And usually they're found at sites with low pollution. It also usually means the fishing is good. So before you get grossed out by the bugs and slugs and other creepy crawlies around a lake or stream, remember that they're just doing their part to keep the ecosystem healthy and functioning. Instead of squishing or killing them, leave them be and take a picture so you can identify them later and learn something new. Before we start talking about some of the larger animals that live in lakes, let's first talk about plants and their role in the ecosystem. Plants rely on sunlight and nutrients in the soil and water to grow. They are extremely important to maintaining a healthy ecosystem and can change during the course of the lake's life. Also, the species present and how many there are can vary greatly between different lakes. The three main types of plants in aquatic ecosystems are submerged plants, or plants who are rooted in the sediment and grow up through the water. Emergent plants, or plants who are also rooted in the sediment, but they extend out of the water and are visible above the surface. And floating plants, who live on the surface of the water and are not rooted in the sediment. Plants are key players in lake ecosystems because they provide dissolved oxygen through photosynthesis, habitat, shelter, and food. Plus, they provide shoreline stability, prevent erosion, and are able to filter out many pollutants draining into the lake. Since plants rely on nutrients such as phosphorus and nitrogen to grow, if there are too many nutrients available, say due to pollution from fertilizers, they can grow too much and impact the ecosystem. For example, algae blooms are natural in many aquatic ecosystems. However, too many algae blooms or abnormally large blooms can be indicators of nutrient pollution or other issues in the watershed. Certain types of algae blooms can also release toxic chemicals that can kill other organisms living in the lake. Like bugs, it's helpful to know what plant species are usually present at your local streams and lakes, or native plant species. Not only is it fun to identify plants and learn what's growing around you, but you can also help stop the spread of aquatic invasive species by knowing which plants are native and which are non-native and potentially threatening to the environment. Finally, the plant species present in aquatic ecosystems changes during a lake's life cycle. As we talked about before, there aren't many plants present in young lakes or oligotrophic lakes. However, older or eutrophic lakes are often filled with a wide variety of plant species and can look much different than younger lakes. In conclusion, plants are incredibly diverse and important organisms in lake habitats. They provide stabilization within the ecosystem and are valuable resources for all other living things. Plants are also indicators of the health and age of the lake based on which species are present or are dominant in the ecosystem. As you learn more and become better at identifying plants, you'll be able to see your favorite lakes and streams in a whole new light and it'll make being outside even more interesting and fun.
When you think about what lives in a lake, the first thing that comes to mind is often fish. Fish are one of my favorite animals, and I love learning about them, whether I'm in the classroom, reading the news, or on the water. Fish are major players in lake ecosystems and are also important to our communities. Fishing has played a key role in many cultures across the world that live near the water. The presence or absence of certain fish species and their health is important not just to the ecosystem in and around the lake, but also to the communities whose cultures and economies depend on the lake. Fish can be omnivores and feed on smaller organisms and plants, such as zooplankton, bugs, and phytoplankton, or they can be piscivores and feed on other smaller fish. In turn, fish provide an important food source for larger animals, such as bears, birds, and humans. There are over 30,000 species of fish around the world, and they make up about half of all known vertebrate species. What fish species are present in a lake depends on many factors, such as where you are in the world, the climate, food and shelter available, and the quality of the water. Here in Lake Ponderay, Idaho Fish and Game has observed 23 different species of fish, including the native and threatened bull trout, West Slope cutthroat trout, large and smallmouth bass, kokanee salmon, northern pike, and more. Each different species has their own requirements for habitat, food, and water temperature. For example, bull trout require cold, clean water and are very sensitive to changes in temperature or water quality. I'm going to use our goldfish to represent fish. Today, we have one little guy and one big guy to represent diversity in the fish community. Since many fish and most of their food sources are sensitive to changes in the environment, which species are present and how many there are helps us monitor how changes around the watershed could be affecting aquatic habitat. Also, fishing can have a major impact on the fish living in the lake and should be properly managed. Many big fishing areas, such as Lake Ponderay, have local fishing restrictions and regulations to ensure that our native populations are preserved and are not affected by harmful fishing practices. In conclusion, fish are not only important to us humans, but they are also important to the ecosystem as a whole. They help transfer energy from smaller organisms, such as zooplankton and bugs, to larger animals, such as birds, bears, and humans. They can be super sensitive to changes in their environment, so making sure that we're being responsible around our entire watershed is important to keep our ecosystems and our fish healthy. Finally, our last topic for what lives in a lake ecosystem encompasses all of the other large animals that live around the lake and depend on it for drinking water, food, shelter, and other resources. Not only does a lake hold a vast and incredible ecosystem under the water, but it also supports a great diversity of other animals in the surrounding watershed. One group of often semi-aquatic organisms includes amphibians and reptiles. These animals usually live along the shoreline or in wetland habitats. Some examples include toads, frogs, salamanders, newts, snakes, turtles, and lizards. These organisms are valuable indicators of environmental health and are an important food source for many other animals. Many of us also associate birds with lakes. Many birds rely on lakes for migration, food, and habitat. Some common birds you can see around our lake include mallards, bald eagles, osprey, geese, swans, coots, and cormorants. Birds help maintain the diversity of other organisms, control pests, and support recreational hunting. They can also be indicators of issues in the watershed if their population decreases or if they stop using a body of water in the migration routes. Another major group of animals that rely on lakes are mammals. These include moose, bears, muskrat, minks, otters, raccoons, and sometimes bears, deer, and bats. These mammals rely on lakes for food, such as fish, bugs, and plants, habitat, and clean water. What amphibians, reptiles, mammals, and birds live around a lake ecosystem can vary greatly between different parts of the world, and it's fun to learn what animals you might find around your favorite lake. Finally, the most influential animal on lake ecosystems is us, humans. For thousands of years, humans have been drawn to water bodies for resources such as fish, food, hunting, good soil for farming, and clean water. Nowadays, 
We still rely heavily on lakes for recreation, aesthetic pleasure, economy, agriculture, cultural significance, food, and drinking water. Our local community is incredibly thankful for the bountiful resources we receive from Lake Ponderé. Our lake has been known for world-class game fishing, provides opportunities for all types of water sports, has been a historic gathering site for local Native American tribes, and is a source of drinking water for at least five different communities along the shoreline. However, our actions tend to have major impacts on the lake and the surrounding watershed. It's important for us to be cognizant of the consequences of our actions and do what we can to prevent some of these issues. In our next chapter, we'll explore anthropogenic impacts, or impacts from humans, and what we can change to help protect and preserve our aquatic ecosystems. We all need to do our part to help keep our lake and other waterways swimmable, fishable, and drinkable for future generations. Once again, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Thank you.